All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here, and we got us a doozy today, or at least I hope so, because it's a spicy topic for sure. The video is titled, What Does the Bible Say About Same-Sex Relationships? Some people consider this a controversy. I don't. If you've seen any of my videos up to this point, you already know where I stand. Ten toes down, never going to waver, as clear, cut, and dry, straightforward as it gets in God's Word. Our Heavenly Father created man and woman to be together in holy matrimony, marriage, that covenant. Anything outside of that is sinful behavior and an abomination. You're not getting into heaven, but for whatever reason, no matter what, what translation people are studying, they still seem to get it twisted. All the translations say Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, not Eve and Amelia, but still people think they need a better explanation than that. So I'm curious what Dr. Frank Turek, a Christian apologist, has to say about that. He's been uh, a man of faith, a man of God, a whole lot longer than me. So maybe he can add something and maybe I can learn something that I didn't previously consider. I'll give my thoughts after we watch this clip. Let's get it popping. I have a lot of friends who are... Christian, but they're progressive Christian, basically. Okay. And usually I try to talk to them about the Bible and stuff, and there's like usually two arguments they have. The first one is where they usually say that, oh, it's mistranslated. It's not man shall not sleep with man, it's man shall not sleep with boy. And uh -huh. then some even believe that it's homosexuality is a sin, but they'll say that it doesn't matter if they live that lifestyle because as long as they believe in Jesus, as long as they repent, and have faith that they'll go to heaven, they'll still go to heaven. So hmm. yeah, those are the two arguments that they usually have. Wait a second, that don't add up. This is what we call an oxymoron because he said he has a lot of friends who are progressive Christians. No, nope. you have a lot of friends that are progressives, but they haven't arrived at that Christian part yet. They are misconstrued, mislabeling, that's a facade. Because if you really sit down with any of these people, that call him or herself that kind of Christ follower, they're not following the real Jesus Christ whatsoever because you find out real quick that many or most of them don't actually believe in the authority or inerrancy of scripture. They're always trying to make things, verses, and scriptures fit their narrative, but it says what it says, regardless of how triggered and upset you may get about it. They don't believe Christianity as the way, the truth, the life. Many see Jesus as one way among many ways, when that's not the case at all. A lot of these people still think that there's an Allah, Buddha, being spiritual and your truth and their truth and et cetera, et cetera, and so on. That just ain't it. They say Jesus loved everyone, but neglect to mention that he also loves us by calling us to repentance. That's how he really loves us, by speaking the truth in love and showing us the way to live righteously that gets us to heaven. That's the truth. So to, to wrap it up, progressive Christian that's no kind of Christian at all because you have to change the word of God and, and call God a liar to be whatever form of Christian you're trying to be. And there's only one form of Christianity. So you might as well try to be a vegan carnivore while you're at it. Just The two just don't coincide. But continue. I'll bring it back a little bit. She'll not sleep with boy. And uh -huh. then some even believe that it's homosexuality is a sin. But they'll say that it doesn't matter if they live that lifestyle because as long as they believe in Jesus, as long as they repent, and have faith that they'll go to heaven, they'll still go to heaven. So, mm -hmm. yeah, those are the two arguments that they usually have. Mm -hmm. I just want to know your preference. Yeah, okay, great question. Abomination. Um, first of all, when somebody says something, it's not their job. It's not your job to refute what they say. It's their job to support what they say, right? Yeah. So, uh, if he's trying to say, your friend is trying to say, well, it's mistranslated. I, first question would be, what do you mean by it's mistranslated? What is the proper translation? And then how did you come to that conclusion? What evidence do you have for that position? Because I can tell you that if you look at Romans chapter 1, he's talking about the act of same-sex behavior. And in ancient times, same-sex behavior in the first century was considered immoral just like it was considered immoral among Christians or Jews prior to that. Okay, so. It's the behavior itself. It's not the orientation. It's yeah. not, well, I have this yeah. feeling, okay? If that were the case, having the feeling of uh, heterosexual relationships would be sinful too because you can use that illicitly as well, okay? It's the action. And so the acts themselves were condemned as indecent, according to Romans 1. I don't care how you translate it. You can translate it any way you want as long as you understand that the original meant indecent acts. I have to disagree with Dr. Turek because he said it's only 
based on the act that is the sin. But multiple times in the Bible, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, said that if you even look at a woman with lust, you have committed sin in your mind and in your heart. James also expands on it that sin starts in the mind. It's an act and and a thought. So I have to d- disagree with Frank there. I don't know where he's... I kind of get what he's trying to say, but let, let's expound on Scripture to the fullest extent. If you even look at a woman as a straight man, if you look at a woman in lust or you're a straight woman and you look at a man in lust, that sin has already been committed. You have to repent of that. That's a sin. God always gives us a way out. He always, with every temptation, there's a way that you can lean into righteousness or the way, there's a way that you can lean into sin and allow Satan to keep deceiving you and then even go further into that sin and commit actions like, you know, an affair or watching pornography and it, for all that sort of stuff, but it starts in the mind. So let's let's come correct. Let's break it down to the to the fullest evaluation we can. Sin is sin, mind, action, all of that. Okay. Yes. And then the second part that he mentioned is that you can live however you want and you'll still be saved, not according to Paul. In fact, if you look at uh, not according to Jesus either. If you look at Rome, uh, Romans chapter six, Paul says, well. If we're saved by grace, shouldn't we sin all the more so grace will abound? And Paul says, may it never be. And then when he's dealing with a problem in the church at Corinth, there's a man at the church at Corinth, which was the Las Vegas of the ancient world, who was actually sleeping with his father's wife, his stepmother. And he was proud of it. He said, I'm doing this. And Paul said, expel the immoral brother from your a congregation. Expel him. Satan maybe will teach him a lesson. I think he says something like that. And then the idea was if you expel him, hopefully he's going to come to his senses and he can be restored later. What does all this mean? It means this. Every single person is welcome in the church. There's only one person who's not welcome. Someone who claims to be a Christian and says that known sin isn't really sin. Paul says, expel the immoral brother. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you don't love Jesus and you're not keeping his commandments, are you saved? No, you're not saved because you're keeping his commandments. Keeping his commandments is evidence that you are saved. You see the point? Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. In fact, Jesus even says, there's going to be some of you who are going to say, oh, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name and that in your name? Away from me. I never knew you. So, uh, good works are evidence you're saved. They're not the cause of your salvation. They're the result of your salvation. As Martin Luther famously said, you're saved by faith alone, but your faith is not alone. Amen. As Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, where he says, you're saved not by works, but by grace through faith. In the next couple of verses, he says, you were prepared to do good works. So, Jesus is your Savior if he's also your Lord. If he's just, oh, I I got fire insurance and I'm going to do whatever I want, that doesn't demonstrate you're truly saved. Well, land sakes, that sure took a different turn than I was expecting, and I ain't mad at it. God bless both of these gentlemen, and we should be praying that more folks like this young man keep getting curious about Christ and asking questions in order to, at some point, discover the truth somewhere along their journey. God's going to make himself known and reveal himself at some point. You may be at a crossroads. You may be at an all-time high, all-time low. At some point, you're going to be faced with the decision to where you get to use your free will. You get to to make that decision. Am I going to follow Christ? Christ, or am I going to keep leaning into my own accord and, and allowing Satan to, to guide me into more darkness and more destruction and thinking that my truth and my way, I know something that, that God don't know. That's just, it's never going to fly. And Jesus isn't your, your just button that you could tap at your convenience to make things better. What Frank is saying in that is that the people not welcome in the church are the wolves in sheep's clothing. The people that proclaim that they're Christians, proclaim that they're saved, but still promote sin, still promote all this nonsense as, as though it's okay, as though God approves of that of that behavior and that it, it pleases him. It doesn't. People that are sinners are welcome in the church because we're all sinners. Only Christ is perfect. So we all need that saving grace and merciful love that God offers us through his only begotten son. But to say you're a Christian or to even not say that you're a Christian and, and say that sin... It's all listed in the Bible. Sin is sin. There ain't no other way to chop it up. There's no greater. There's no less. If you promote that as a falsehood and say that it's not sin and keep on practicing it, 
you're not welcome. You need to be expelled from the church. You shouldn't be surrounding yourself with such people until they truly come awake and alive to the truth of reality. So I love this right here. Honestly, this was one of the best explanations that I've ever heard about works versus grace. But I guarantee people are still going to troll in the comments and take what Frank said out of context as, as works-based salvation, even though he literally spelled it out and said, good works do not produce salvation. Good works are a product of of salvation. Now I had to pause real quick and do my due diligence, even though this is probably just the next frame of the video for y'all. So you don't even know that I paused, but either way, I really wanted to get into the nitty gritty, uh, this entire thing of works and salvation. And I even took notes, y'all. We got to start it off with Matthew five, verse 16. Jesus said, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. And then many people's favorite that's usually cut short and not given in full context, Ephesians two, verse eight, through 10 for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of God not a result of works so that no one may boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them now people usually stop at that through faith part and they want to get lazy and think that they can just coast through life and not go out and spread the good news and not lead by example and try to help lost souls reach repentance they try to hoard that salvation to themselves but good works are prepared by God beforehand that we should walk in them the two coincide regardless of how you feel about it. Salvation and works, works and salvation. You, you don't truly have one without the other being present. That's just how it goes. Now on the other side of that, we do see people out in the world doing good things that don't have eternal salvation or what we perceive as a positively good example and that they're genuinely doing good acts with good intentions. And then people will say, well, that's not fair because at the same time, there's pastors out there doing evil, sick and twisted things, perverting God's word and using it to acquire the riches and acquire the lusts and things that they want to, doing absolutely disgusting things out in the world, false proclaiming Christians that constantly choose to sin in all sorts of ways. How come they get a pass? But good people that you know, don't believe in God. They don't get a pass. They don't have eternal salvation. Spoiler alert. God is going to judge us all based on all of our actions and all of our hearts. He's perfect. He's going to have the perfect judgment, the perfect verdict at exactly the perfect time. So while it may look like on the exterior, someone is, is pulling a fast one over the head of the most high, that ain't happening. It, it just doesn't work like that. They may proclaim that they're doing that, but the things that they got coming to them for being a false prophet, a false teacher, are, are really bad. I can promise you it's going to end very toasty with damnation, lake of fire, and hell. It may look like they got it all figured out, but they don't. They are lost and stranded just as much as the person that doesn't put their faith in Christ that is out there genuinely trying to be a good person. So don't believe everything you see and hear and buy into all that hype because people may have a certain label or say things that sound sweet in public, but in reality, they aren't saved either. It's biblically inconsistent to say that someone has been saved but not changed, that their heart hasn't been transformed. Many people, they go through outward motions of giving their life to Christ and, and going through the, the baptism and all of that, but no lifestyle change actually follows that. So it's a false salvation. It's not real. It's a dead faith. James 2 verse 26 says, for as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Think about it like this. I'm going to give an analogy that I found that, that really paints the picture to hopefully make it make sense if you're still not following. When you walk into a dark room and flip the switch, you expect light. If no light appears, you rightly assume something is wrong. It would be logically inconsistent to say that the light is on when the room is still pitch black. Light naturally dispels darkness. When a dark heart receives the light of salvation, it is illuminated. So it's this false sense of salvation if they haven't truly been transformed from the inside out. They're still living in darkness. John 12 verse 46 says, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. That's Jesus Christ. So when you've truly been saved, your priorities change, your desires change, outlook, everything. Life is seen clearly for the first time. You're not listening to the same trash rap music or rock, promoting drugs, alcohol, sex, and, and rock and roll, all that sort of craziness. You're not watching porn and, and trashy shows. You're not looking at women in lust or men or, or vice versa. You're not dressing as, as crazy. You're, you're dressing more modest and you, know, you want people to see you as a positive example for the kingdom. You live righteously. And if the darkness of sin continues, then we can assume 
safely that no actual light, no salvation has actually taken place and came on in that person's life just yet. When it's all said and done and our time has come to an end on this side of the grass, we're all going to get exactly what we deserve. doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. There's only two genders, by the way. I just have to throw that in there. So you thinking that you can change it, that's not going to change and alter the outcome of your judgment. Your best bet is to, to put your faith and trust and live righteously with Jesus Christ being the lamp that guides all your decisions. So when that day of judgment does come, you'll be on the cooler side of that decision that lasts forever. So I pray for anybody that, that thinks that they're saved, but in reality, they're being deceived and, and aren't. I pray that at some point, God transforms their heart and with conviction and brings them to the truth. Because without the truth, you ain't got nothing. And that's just a fact. So, Lord, I pray for these people. I pray for y'all. We know how this ends, but let's try to guide as many people to repentance in the kingdom as possible before then. But what do y'all think about all this? From Frank's points to the young man's questions to my rant on this. I know we got real deep with it. That's just how we roll on this channel. I go on tangents. I'm passionate. I could be wrong. Let me know why with some proof down below in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts and, and opinions down below. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to like this video by smashing the thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring the notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video. Just in case YouTube forgets to let you know, I appreciate you. I love y'all for doing so. If you want to take it a step further, you like what we're doing over here, you want to show a little extra love and support, by no means do you have to, but you can get awesome designs like this, confidence, knowing I can't, but he can. These designs are made over my wife's Etsy store by her, customized in-house, all of that, insulated tumblers, petite, teat, small sizes to big, big and hefty for the 5X folks out there, all different sizes and colors. Like I said, we don't discriminate. We appreciate y'all. It goes a very long way and allowing me to continue to do what I do. All my other links are down below in the description section. Shout out to the Patreon, buy me a coffee fam. Anybody who's ever joined the Gibson family on YouTube by hitting that little join button and becoming a member, I'm so grateful for y'all. I can't thank you enough and put into words and context just how appreciative I am for you guys showing up every single video and allowing my freckle face to rant at you. I just, I just love y'all so much and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. I'll be praying for you. Until next time, Godspeed, I'm gone.